Hey everyone! Welcome back to this channel. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a food recipe website, just like the one you're seeing in the background. This project is super simple and beginner friendly, using HTML, CSS, and just a little bit of JavaScript, along with some cool extensions that you absolutely don't want to miss. So, make sure to watch till the end. But before we dive in, let me quickly show you a demo of what we'll be building. As you can see, when I type some text, let's try searching for some egg-related dishes, I type egg into the search bar, hit enter, a loading animation appears for a moment, and then, bam, a collection of egg dishes is displayed, complete with images and their names. And also if I type nothing and hit enter it gives me a shaking effect in the input failed, which looks attractive and professional. And that's not all. You can search for other dishes too. For example, let's try chicken. I'll type chicken into the search bar, hit enter, and there you have it. A list of chicken dishes, just like that. Now, here's where it gets even better. You can click on this button right here to view the recipe for any dish. Look how clean and easy to read the layout is, perfect for anyone who loves to cook or explore new recipes. Oh, and there's more. This website is fully responsive, so it looks just as amazing on mobile devices as it does on a desktop screen. Take a look, the cards and the pop-ups align perfectly, even on smaller screens. Now, without wasting any more time, let's jump right into it. Alright, let's get started by creating the structure of the website. First, we'll create a file and name it index.html. In this file, we'll add the basic HTML structure. Inside the body, we'll create a container that includes a heading, a short paragraph, and of course, a search bar with an input field and button. Below that, we'll add a section where the results will appear, this is where the cards with images and names of dishes will be displayed later. Now, it's time to style it. For that, we'll create a new file called style.css and link it to the HTML. Let's start by styling the body, this is something we always do. We'll set up a clean and simple design with some padding and a nice background color. Then, we'll move on to the container. We'll add padding to give it some breathing room, align the text to the center, and adjust the spacing for the heading and paragraph. Next, let's style the search field. First, we'll focus on the input box, adding width, height, margin, and padding to make it look neat and user-friendly. Then, we'll style the button, giving it a background color, a nice font size, and a hover effect to make it interactive. Doesn't that already sound exciting? At this point, about 20% of the work is done. Now, let's move on to the card section. For the cards, we'll make them look visually appealing with CSS. We'll create a grid layout to align them neatly and add some padding, shadows, and hover effects to give them a professional touch. In the cards, we will add some spacing and style the image section and the heading part, which makes the card look good, and then move to the button part, which we use to get the receipt, where we will add some hover effect. Later, we'll use JavaScript to populate these cards dynamically, but for now, let's focus on their styling. Now, let's add a loading spinner. In the HTML file, create a div with a class for the spinner. Then, in the CSS file, style it to appear in the center of the screen using position, fixed. Add some width, height, and a spinning animation to make it look smooth and modern. For that we will use keyframes, we will translate and rotate the spinner for better design, and it looks amazing. Trust me, this will elevate your website's user experience. Next, we'll write the JavaScript. First, create a file called script.js and link it to the HTML. For linking the JavaScript with HTML, you have write script tag and write attribute src, and inside it give the path of JS file. Now, let's start by selecting all the elements we'll interact with, like the search button, input field, results grid, and spinner. First, we will add an search trigger, so that when we give input, 
and hit enter, it will directly click on search button, which makes a professional look. For this effect, we use key press in Advent Listener, and add condition, that if we click on enter then it trigger the search button. When we click the search button, we'll check if the input field is empty. If it is, we'll add a fun shaked effect to grab the user's attention. For that, go to the CSS file, and add an input.error and inside it, add a red border, and an animation. After that create a keyframe, where use transform and translate to move the input field left and right, which gives a shaking effect if there is no value in input, which makes a professional look. Now, after that, we will remove hidden class from loading spinner, till the food receipt card loaded completely. Now, after that, we have to fetch an API for the data. For that, I'm going to use this free API, which I got from this website. Before using it in my project, I'll check the API and the details it provides in the JSON format. I'm going to use a VS Code extension called Echo API. Yes, you heard it right. To get started, just visit the VS Code extension marketplace, search for Echo API, select this one, and click install. That's all. Simple, right? Now, I suppose you might be wondering, why am I using this extension instead of Postman, Thunder Client, or others? Well, here's the deal. It offers a super lightweight, streamlined experience for API testing. Perfect when you need to quickly send requests and view responses. It's free to use, supports offline usage, and is ideal for rapid prototyping and debugging. Isn't that amazing? So, now let's test the API. Select post, enter the API in the URL field, and click send. And, there you go. I've got some responses. It contains an image, an ID, a name. Perfect. We've got exactly what we wanted. This API is working flawlessly, so we can confidently use it in our website. Let's jump back and start writing the code in JavaScript. First, we'll fetch the API using the try method to get the response and data. Next, we'll remove the loading spinner and erase any previous results if they're available. Now, here's an important step. If there are no details available, we'll display a message that says, no details found. Because, hey, we need to keep the user informed, right? After that, we'll limit the output to a maximum of 8 cards. I'll add code to create a div inside the result grid and fill it with the details, an image, a heading, and a button. And, of course, we'll style it all beautifully. Finally, we'll append the child element. Now, since we're using the try block, we'll also add a catch block. If something goes wrong, we'll print an error message saying, error fetching data. The loading animation will be removed, and inside the result grid, we'll display a message, something went wrong. Please try again later. It's always better to have a fallback plan, right? Now that 80% of the work is done, let's test it out. I'll start by entering any input value, like egg. Enter. And look at that, the spinner works like a charm, running smoothly. And finally, here come the cards. The loading spinner hides, and the results are displayed perfectly. Till this part, everything works seamlessly. Isn't it exciting to see our hard work come to life? Let's keep going. Now we're down to the final part, showing the recipe of the meal. For this, we'll create a beautiful pop-up. Let's jump right in. First, we'll go to the HTML file and create a recipe pop-up container. Inside it, we'll add a close button at the top right corner a heading that we'll dynamically replace with the specific recipe title, a section for recipe details. That's all we need to structure the pop-up. Next, let's move to the CSS file to style it up. Start by styling the pop-up container. We'll make it fixed in position, give it a width and height, and add a background color. To center it, we'll use Flexbox. Then, we'll create a hidden class to toggle the pop-up visibility. For the recipe text, set the text alignment to left and add some padding, margin, and line height for readability. Style the pop-up content with a relative position, padding, width, height, and center-align text. 
Finally, let's style the close button. Position it at the top right, make it stand out with a red background, add some padding, and include a hover effect for interactivity. Now let's move to the JavaScript file to add interactivity. Add an event listener to the close button to hide the pop-up when it's clicked. For a more professional touch, we'll also make the pop-up close when the user clicks outside of it. With this, the pop-up functionality is complete. All we need to do now is dynamically add the recipe instructions for the meal. And e that's it. The pop-up is styled, functional, and ready to display the delicious recipe details. Now, using the meal ID that we obtained from the previous API, we'll fetch the recipe for that meal. Yes, we're diving deeper into the details. But first, let's test this new API in Echo API and see if it really works. Again, I'll paste the API URL, click send, and au voila. As you can see, it's working perfectly. We've got the full instructions for the recipe. This means we can now use this API to fetch the recipe for any meal. How exciting is that? Let's get back to our JavaScript file and start coding. First, we'll add an event listener to each button on the card. This is where we'll capture the meal ID for the selected meal. Using this meal ID, we'll fetch the recipe API and get the response data. Simple and efficient. Next, we'll extract the recipe title and instructions from the API. But we're not stopping there. To ensure the instructions are clean and readable, we'll add some line breaks and trim unnecessary spaces. Neat, right? And finally, we'll open the pop-up by removing the hidden class from the pop-up element. This will showcase all the recipe details beautifully. And e that's it. Everything is finished. From fetching the recipe to displaying it in an elegant pop-up, mission accomplished. Let's see this in action. <laughs>